you're watching a Detroit Pistons fan make this video. And I am speechless. I don't, we don't need to see our beautiful starting lineup, but I am speechless. So this is the official trade. The Celtics will be getting Marcus Morris. The Pistons will be getting Avery Bradley and a future second round pick. I don't know what pick the exactly is, but that's the only second round pick that doesn't belong to the Pistons, so I figured that might be the one. Do, do, do you know who the Celtics GM is? I thought it was Danny Ainge. A phenomenal GM who's really good at trading. Well, that's questionable. Okay, so let me tell you guys a little story. So I just uploaded the second episode of the Aces Fantasy League, whatever, the, the Fantasy Franchise thing. And um, I just finished uploading and I was about to make a video, but I went, oh, why don't I go on ESPN first? See what's going on. Top headlines. Celtics trade, why, why did Al Horford just block Drummond? But Celtics trade Avery Bradley to Pistons, or trade Bradley to Pistons. I'm like, wait, what? Like, I was excited. I was like, oh, we must have traded Drummond. Because I think Andre Drummond's perfect for the Celtics. I was going to make a video saying the perfect trade for these two teams involving Andre Drummond and potentially maybe Avery Bradley or Jake Crowder of that Brooklyn pick or something like that. But you know what? Want to know what we gave up? Marcus Marsh. We got a second round pick too. Who's better, Avery Bradley or Marcus Marsh? Avery Bradley. Now, I know the Celtics are trying to clear up cap for Hayward. You know how much this saves? Four mil. Thank you, John Moore. It saves four mil. So what would you rather get? If you're a GM, I know in real life I'd rather take Marcus Morris and four mil than Avery Bradley, but that's because I don't, I'm not a millionaire. I'm not flinging around money left and right. But if you were a GM, what would you rather? An all-NBA defender in Avery Bradley and a second-round pick or Marcus Morris and four million dollars? I would take Avery Bradley and the second-round pick. He got snubbed from the all-defense team. He got snubbed. Snubbed. And right after I was going to check ES out ESPN and see what happened, I was going to make a video. I was going to do five underrated players in the five most... Uh, how did Isaiah Thomas make that? But five, the five most underrated and the five most overrated players in the NBA. And Avery Bradley was going to be on that underrated list. I, I am in pure shock. Pistons A+. Plus. Celtics D. So let's go for the pit. Let's talk about the Pistons thing first. I'm a Pistons fan. I want to talk about the Pistons, obviously, because they're my team. Now, I like Marcus Morris. I'm a big Kansas fan. I'm a big Pistons fan. It kind of works out. I'm not shooting anyone for John Moore. That's all we've done. But I'm a big Kansas fan. So I'm a little sad getting rid of Marcus Morris, but this benefits our team so much that it's just ridiculous because we're getting a phenomenal defender. Now, he's very similar to KCP. KCP is a free agent, a restricted free agent, who's good, who is probably going to get a max. He hasn't gotten any offers yet, like Otto Porter, but he's going to get a lot of money. This doesn't force us to bring him back on a ridiculous contract. I like KCP. I want to bring him back. But now we don't need KCP. If we can still bring him back, we will. But the chances of us bringing KCP back now for like 16, 17 mil are slim. If we didn't make this trade and KCP will be making 16 mil a year, I'd say, heck yeah. Match it. But now we don't need Kentay these call up hope. Brooklyn, you can get him. Sacramento. I mean, Sacramento doesn't really need him. But Brooklyn, want KCP? Want to offer him a max? Take him. Take him. And I want the Pistons to tank. But this move doesn't help us tank. That's the only issue I have with it. This actually makes us better. I want to lose. I mean, I don't want to lose. I, what I want... This team showed me a lot of growth. Not last year, but the year before when we made the playoffs. I thought we would be like a four seed. Yeah, no. And either if we suck, if we don't make the playoffs this year, I mean, we should, considering the East is crap. Well, let, let, let's let Marcus Morris shoot the three. Let's let him shoot it. Yeah. That's why I let him shoot it. But the East sucks, so maybe it's not the worst idea to try to make a playoff run and not trade Drummond and do this. Now for the Celtics. I understand they're trying to clear up cap to get Hayward. What would you rather, Avery Bradley or Marcus Morris and Gordon Hayward? I think I would take Marcus Morris and Gordon Hayward in a heartbeat. But, this only clears up 4 mil. I think they should trade Al Horford for like a center, kind of like Hassan Whiteside. Now, Hassan Whiteside's making like as much money as Al Horford, but I'm saying someone like Hassan Whiteside. 
Someone, Al Horford, I feel like is more of a stretch floor, or stretch floor, some, a stretch floor, someone who can spread the floor. He's not a great rebounder, not a great shot blocker, but he can shoot the ball. He's a pretty good scorer. But like Hassan Whiteside and Andre Drummond and DeAndre Jordan, they're not guys who can set the floor, but they're what the Celtics team really needs. Rebounding. The Celtics have no rebounding whatsoever. They suck at that department. Poor Boban didn't even touch him. But they suck at rebounding. Okay? So why not get one of those centers? Maybe move Al Horford to the four, but Al Horford's on a big contract. This does save him money, and I understand that Avery Bradley is a free agent at the end of his upcoming season, and I'm only assuming he's an unrestricted free agent. And he's going to want a lot of money, like near a max. I understand that. I'm willing to take that risk as a Pistons fan. I'm willing to pay that. He's only making 8 mil this year. But next year, ugh, he's going to be making a lot. And I'm willing to pay him. If he does really well, which I think he will, I'm willing to pay him. At his best, he is a borderline all-star. Defensively, if, if you only, like, for MVP, if you only put defense into effect, he'd definitely be an all-NBA first team. I mean, he didn't make an all-defensive team, so maybe not, but he would definitely be a perennial all-star. And he's not an awful, he's a pretty good shooter. He's a solid scorer. He put up, like, 16 points and 6 rebounds or something this year. With his phenomenal defense. Call me crazy, but those are arguably all-star numbers. And it, I'm not saying this because I'm excited that he's on my... Why did I do that? I'm not saying that because I'm excited and he's on my team. I told you I was going to make an all... An, a bunch of un, the five most underrated players. Avery Bradley was going to be on that list regardless of what team he did. I chose like the five underrated people and the five overrated people before I knew about this trade. I am not lying to you. But I am so stoked right now. Like, I saw it on ESPN. I was literally jumping. I was like, wait, did this just happen? Like, I pre like I saw it. I was like, oh, do we trade Drummond? Then I saw Avery Bradley second round pick for Marcus Morris. I'm like, are you lying? Is this a joke? Clearly not. Thank you, Danny Ainge, for screwing yourselves over. Well, I shouldn't say once again, but... Thank you, Danny Ainge, for screwing yourselves over to help us get a lot better. Danny Ainge... I want to give you a big thank you. A thank you letter. I want to write a thank you letter to Danny Ainge for that trade. I love Avery Bradley. I think he's a stud. And this makes the Pistons a whole lot better. If we miss the playoffs next year, then I don't know what to say.